Welcome to the Macmillan Report. I'm Marilyn Wilkes, your host, and our guest is the Right Honorable Relia Amolo Odinga, Prime Minister of the Republic of Kenya from 2008 to 2013. He was first elected as the Member of Parliament for Langara in 1992, served as Minister of Energy from 2001 to 2002, and as Minister of Roads, Public Works, and Housing from 2003 to 2005. Mr. Odinga ran against incumbent Mawai Kabaki in the 2007 presidential election. While the results of that election were largely in question, Mr. Kabaki was announced the winner and Mr. Odinga accused Mr. Kabaki of electoral fraud. Two months of violence in the country ensued before Kofi Annan, the United States Secretary General at the time, intervened and brokered a deal that provided for power sharing between Mr. Odinga and Mr. Kabaki and the recreation of the post of Prime Minister. Today we'll talk with Mr. Odinga about the state of democracy in Africa. Welcome, Your Ex Excellency. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm happy to be here. Good, good. Um, there are 54 sovereign countries in Africa. Um, and most of the, all of them are uh, members of the United Nations, and all except for Morocco are members of the African Union. How many would you consider to be full democracies? Well, um, it's not what I consider, but uh, what the world generally considers. Mm -hmm. uh, I think they say that about 22 of uh, these uh, 54 uh, uh, countries on the continent, mm -hmm. uh, to a certain degree, um, democratic uh, uh, mm -hmm. governments. To a certain degree. Yeah, yeah, because uh, the condition in these countries is not uniform. Right. Uh, it varies from country to country. Mm -hmm. But uh, as you know, that Africa is in transition. Right. So, uh, but these are twenty-two are classified as the leaders in the process of democratization. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Yeah. And where does Kenya fall in that group? Um, I think uh, Kenya falls within, within that, that, that group, just mm -hmm. at the lower, lower end of it. Okay. Yeah. So, um, for the remaining 54 countries, what do you think, what are the major obstacles um, to democracy taking root in those countries in Africa? Well, um, you know, there are areas where there have been uh, reversions um, because you still have the old order uh, clinging to power mm -hmm. without uh, letting go. Um, as you know, what we managed to do uh, following the, the fall of Berlin Wall mm -hmm. and the wind of change that blew in Africa, bringing down the single party and um, military dictatorships. Mm -hmm. um, they are those are the countries where you still have the old leadership, which just refused to let go, uh, participating in elections uh, perfunctorily, but uh, refusing to allow free and fair elections. Mm -hmm. In other words, they reinvent themselves they persuade themselves. Mm -hmm. Some of them have also refused to accept the time li limitations. Mm -hmm. uh, when the, the, the time limitation comes, they mani man manipulate the constitution mm -hmm. to allow themselves to, to continue to uh, remain in power. And is that primarily for economic reasons? I think it's more for economic and personal reasons. Mm -hmm. uh, and they've also refused to liberalize, for example, society, the media, freedom uh, is not there. Mm -hmm. So some of the repressive uh, laws of the past are still uh, in place in those countries. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay, um, the youth population um, in Africa, um, more than 50% of um, the population in Africa are 19 years or younger. In fact, it's Africa is the, the, um, has the most population with the highest rate of um, youth. Can, do you think that that huge 
um, group can can sw have any sway in terms of democracy? Yes, you what see. They, what can they do? You know, uh, uh, the youth can be um, a blessing mm -hmm. or a curse, uh, depending on, on, on how you look at it. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the young population, uh, which is empowered, can be a, a, a force for growth and development. Mm -hmm. uh, on the other hand, if the youth is not empowered, then they remain impediment to economic development because mm -hmm. they will grow into delinquents, uh, drug addicts, uh, criminals, uh, and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, so we are saying that um, this young population in Africa uh, needs to be empowered so that you can be able to reap the demographic dividend mm -hmm. uh, like China has done, like India has also done if they are uh, empowered. Uh, they can uh, become a serious force for uh, change also, mm -hmm. like you saw in the Arab Spring, yes. uh, in Tunisia, uh, in Egypt, and so on. Uh, if they are left and attended to, mm -hmm. uh, they become a major, major force for uh, political uh, destabilization. Mm -hmm. yeah. How do you empower the youth? You empower the youth uh, through uh, uh, skills uh, development, that we impart skills to the youth. Mm -hmm. First, uh, you need to make education uh, accessible mm -hmm. and affordable uh, right from the ch childhood, mm -hmm. uh, nursery, primary, and high school education. And then also have um, institutions that will in impart skills to these youths so that they can become a skilled uh, laborers. Mm -hmm. uh, this is what China did so that uh, China became the factory of the world, mm -hmm. attracting investors to come into the country to create uh, industries mm -hmm. uh, which requires um, a cheap and skilled uh, labor force. Mm -hmm. Uh, this, in my view, is what we, we need to do uh, in Africa. So, of the 54 countries, and of course only 22 are, are true democracies, uh, you know, how do you get education to the youth of those countries that are not democracies? I mean, it seems very difficult. Yeah. Uh, first, you know, the, there was the Millennium Development Goals, mm -hmm. uh, which were supposed to be attained by the 2015. I think uh, when the uh, record was taken, it appears as most of these countries are not going to achieve the MDGs, mm -hmm. uh, particularly the, in as far as education is concerned. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think um, it is an issue which AU, the African Union, uh, need to really push very hard okay. uh, in as far as education is concerned, mm -hmm. uh, so that uh, you have um, a common standard. One, uh, I believe we need to make the education, as I mentioned, uh, accessible from the cradle, that is from the uh, nursery school to primary mm -hmm. and then to secondary, so that every child, irrespective of his or uh, uh, her parent's uh, social st status, mm -hmm. uh, has access to quality education. Um, uh, like any other child, right. um, from uh, primary. Then you also address the issue of the transition from uh, at each level, from primary to secondary, because you usually have in some countries very high dropout levels mm -hmm. at uh, primary, and then also very high dropout at the secondary level. Those who don't transition right. to tertiary uh, training or uh, universities. Uh, and uh, because of that, they become basically uh, useless to society. Right. So you must address the training at all those levels. Mm -hmm. That those who don't make it to the universities have opportunity to go to tertiary training institutions, mm -hmm. where they can get skills. They can become nurses. They can become uh, technicians, and they can become uh, uh, electricians 
uh, plumbers, and so on and so forth. Right, right. Let's, you mentioned the, Afri the African Union and, and helping um, with education. H how strong is the African Union? Uh, maybe uh, the African Union could be stronger. Okay. Uh, I think that the issues which they need to address, which they are not addressing. Such as what? Like uh, I just mentioned, achievement of MDGs. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, AU needs to set up uh, a mechanism through which they can uh, monitor the performance of it, its members mm -hmm. uh, in those regards. Okay. We have NEPAD, of course, uh, which is uh, part of the AU. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that um, uh, sufficient emphasis is being put there uh, so that uh, the nations develop a common standard. Mm -hmm. You see, uh, EU uh, is doing that. Right. Before you become a member of EU, you are vetted. There are certain specific conditions that you must meet right. before you are admitted to the membership. Mm -hmm. Here in the AU, it's just a matter of course. Um, so uh, people uh, don't understand why they, they, they should enjoy those privileges. Mm -hmm. I, I think that being a member of AU should uh, uh, have certain obligations right. uh, so that people don't just sit comfortable, mm -hmm. that you, you, you run a risk of losing your membership. Mm -hmm. For example, if you don't run your economy, in this way or the other way. Because in my view, we should address the issue of moving towards economic integration mm -hmm. of Africa. Like similar to the EU? Yes. Yes. And uh, how do you think other countries would feel about that in Africa? I know that um, um, other countries may not be very comfortable mm -hmm. with, with this. Um, uh, but, but I am sure that um, we, 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 we should not uh, remain too complacent mm -hmm. as, as, as AU, um, uh, like has been the case, because AU was supposed to be an improvement mm -hmm. on the OAU. Right. The OAU was more or less like a liberation movement, mm -hmm. which uh, was formed to continue the process of liberating Africa from colonial yoke right. uh, and apartheid. When that was achieved, then it was disbanded and transformed into OAU. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, the OAU, of course, did not mind about what was happening within the inter in, uh, internally among these member states. Uh, there's a clause which was called non-interference mm -hmm. in the internal affairs of member states. So a member state could violate human rights. And no one could, and no one could interfere with them. And no one could interfere with them. That's right. how people like Idi Amin could kill so many people in Uganda, right. Mobutu in Congo, mm -hmm. Banda in Malawi, um, uh, 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 Bokatsa in Central mm -hmm. African Republic. AU was supposed to be an improvement because instead of non-interference, there is a clause which says non-indifference to violation of human rights mm -hmm. in each in a member state. Right. But that is more in print than in practice. I was going to say, no one mm -hmm. seems to be interfering with any of the um, violence that are going in, on in some parts of Africa today, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. unfortunately. Exactly, exactly. So, I mean, there are a number of issues in Africa. <clears throat> I mean, what do you think is the very first thing that needs to happen to move toward democracy in, in those parts, in those countries that are not democratic? Well, um, without being specific, um, I, I think that um, the AU need to uh, the, uh, apply the, 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 the stick uh, by uh, looking at the performance of some of those countries mm -hmm. and insisting that um, um, certain conditions must be met. Mm -hmm. You see, we tend to wait until too late when the war has broken out. That is when you find AU running left, right, and center trying to broker peace. 
But uh, my view is that uh, AU should be proactive so that you can avoid a breakdown of law and order in a country. Mm -hmm. we just recently, we have seen uh, conflict escalate in Mali, in the Central African Republic, in uh, South Sudan. Mm -hmm. Each time the AU gets involved when it is too late, um, because they are waited until the situation has become explosive. Uh, but one knows the conditions which eventually lead to those kind of um, uh, conflicts. Mm -hmm. So they need to be addressed much earlier uh, before they, they reach those levels which end up causing too much suffering uh, to children, to women, uh, and to the elderly mm -hmm. uh, when the, the country is in a civil war. Right, right. Mm. So do you have hope for the future of Africa and democracy happening someday in your lifetime in those countries where it does not happen now? Yes, yeah, certainly. I would say that I'm an Afro-optimist. Mm -hmm. um, I, I believe uh, in the ability of Africa to rise. Mm -hmm. So despite the, short, the shortcomings and the setbacks that Africa has experienced in the past, I still am I'm positive that uh, ultimately I uh, will get there. Yeah. Uh, and that uh, Africa will actually um, uh, mobilize its resources uh, to be able to join the rest of the hum humanity Mm -hmm. uh, as a, one of the developed parts of, of the world. Very good. Thank you so much for being here with us today. Thank you. It is a pleasure. Thank you. For more information about Mr. Odinga, please visit our website at yale.edu slash Macmillan Report. Be sure to join us again for another episode of the Macmillan Report, made possible through funding from the Whitney and Betty Macmillan Center for International and Area Studies at Yale. Thank you very much. <laughs>